Hello guys and welcome to my programming tip series where I'm showing you some random programming tips on how to program better and uh, what to think of when uh, programming. In this episode I will show you some race conditions in JavaScript. The examples that I will show you in this episode will be in TypeScript. Uh, those of you who are not familiar with TypeScript can click the button over here and learn some TypeScript. So let's start. JavaScript is considered to be a single-threaded uh, language, so it means that you don't need to handle uh, async stuff uh, which you need to handle in languages like C-sharp, which are uh, data access from uh, multiple threads using locks and access to the uh, UI uh, elements uh, invoking the UI thread. Uh, those things are not needed in JavaScript which makes the life much easier. But although it is single-threaded, there are some uh, asynchronous stuff such as timeouts, promises, fetches to some resources on the web. Uh, so you do have some asynchronous uh, functionality, but it is handled by the JavaScript framework uh, and you do not need most of the time to, to think about the asynchronous stuff. So how does it actually work? JavaScript uh, works with a concept called uh, message queues. Uh, what it actually means is, for example, if you're fetching uh, some uh, resource from the web, uh, I don't know, some uh, information about uh, some items that you want to show the user, uh, it, will, it can take a while and the JavaScript framework doesn't want you, you to wait for the resource to return, so it it'll simply lets you to continue the method to finish all the method calls and when the resource is ready what it actually does it puts the resource on a queue of messages of so-called tasks uh, that uh, the framework uh, handles when it's uh, not busy for example if uh, your, your user clicked a button and the button is fetching some information so all the uh, nested uh, functions that are called uh, beginning from the click of the button uh, they will end and when the resource is uh, ready and uh, fetched from the web uh, it will be uh, pushed into the message queue and when the JavaScript framework will be ready uh, and the, the turn of that message will arrive it will handle it synchronously on the same thread uh, that handled the button click so although the framework uh, handles all the processing on a single thread, there are some uh, asynchronous stuff that you need to handle uh, to avoid bugs. Uh, one of those things is uh, race conditions. So what is a race condition? Let's read a definition from uh, Wikipedia. A race condition or race hazard is a behavior of electronic, software or other system where the output is dependent on the sequence of timing of other uncontrollable events. It becomes a bug when events do not happen in the order of, programmer, of the program intended. What it means is you have some events you're watching or handling and uh, you're thinking the, ev the events will occur in uh, some order and uh, you're not expecting the order to be changed but actually the uh, race condition is when this order is actually changed and you're getting the events uh, or callbacks uh, and you handle them not in the order which you intended. So let's see how this can occur in uh, JavaScript. Uh, let's assume we have a state of uh, the application. State, state, okay. And it will be representing some asynchronous state, uh, which means it has uh, properties loading, which will be false because we're not loading currently anything. And the thing that we'll be loading are gonna be some items. Uh, which will uh, be an array of, I don't know, it doesn't even matter what it will be, an array of. Okay, uh, now we will create uh, a function which we'll call, uh, I don't know, uh, fetch items, which will uh, receive the uh, time to delay which will be number and uh, the items to return. You can see we're not having a real, real fetch uh, 
function here. Well, you can't really see now because it's not implemented, but I will tell you, I will not actually fetch some items from, uh, I don't know, from uh, the internet, from some server. Uh, I will simulate the fetching just by using a timer, okay, a set timeout, which will delay the, uh, the items. So now let's implement our fetch items uh, function. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is set the state is loading to be true, which means uh, that we are currently loading the items. Uh, then we're gonna call some uh, fetch uh, method, uh, and uh, the same as here, we'll tell it how much to wait and what to return items. Items, uh, and uh, when it returns, uh, we will uh, call some update state uh, function. Now let's implement both uh, both the fetch and the update state uh, functions. Uh, I have a typo here. Sorry. And what's wrong here? I okay. Items. Yeah. Sorry. So let's implement the fetch and the update state. Let's start from the update state function. Update state which will receive the items, okay? And what it will do, it will, uh, I don't know, set is loading to be false, and uh, state items equal items. It will update the items we're, we have here. Um, what I want to do uh, also is, for the sake of the example, I want to log the state. Okay, I want to uh, to show what the state looks after uh, the update state is uh, run. Now let's implement the fetch function. So we'll have a fetch function, which will also return uh, receive time to a number and the items to return an array of any, and it will return a promise of the items. Watch is what is wrong here. Cannot find name fetch because it's not fetch. I'm typing very badly today. This is name fetch. So uh, let's implement the fetch function. Uh, we will return a promise. So let's create it. Okay, and the promise is accepting a function which will have a resolve parameter which is also a function. <clears throat> what we'll do here is we'll uh, set a timeout to the time to delay time and when it elapses we'll resolve the promise with the items. Okay so uh, let's see again what happens. We have a state which is uh, by default not loading with empty items. We have a fetch items function, which receives uh, the time to delay the fetch and the items to return. It, uh, what it does, it's actually uh, setting the state to be loading uh, to show the user that we are loading the items. It fetches the items and then updates the state. Uh, the update state uh, actually uh, set the is loading to false to show the user that the loading is uh, done and updates the items to show the user the items and then logs the state just for us for now and the fetch uh, method which will be the actual call to th the server receive the time to delay and uh, the items to return and it returns the promise which is resolved after the time to delay. So let's see what happens in the regular case uh, when we don't have a race condition. Uh, let's call the fetch, the fetch items with 10 milliseconds to delay and return, I don't know, 1 and 2, the items 1 and 2, and call the fetch items again and delaying it uh, more uh, for, I don't know, delayed fetch and, uh, and delayed response and we'll return the items 3 and before doing that, let's uh, make our logs a little bit more informative. So this will be 
the log for the update state and let's add the same thing here just before the fetch itself let's log the state for the fetch items okay let's compile it and run it and let's see what happens here so the first fetch items is uh, the fetch items of the of this call and what it does it sets the is loading to true and logs the state the second line is the same thing for the second line uh, from here uh, the update states uh, are actually the callbacks of the fetch the result here and what it does it's setting the state to false sets the items and logs the update state so we can see here that the items 1 and 2 are returned uh, first and then the items of uh, 3 and 4 are returned uh, and this is actually a regular flow without any race condition now let's see what happens if we make the uh, delays the opposite way which means the first fetch is going to be slower than the second fetch so let's compile and run it again now what we see here is the same uh, thing on the first two lines but the third and the first line are a little bit different and what we can see here is the items we are setting are actually the opposite way around so the last state which we have is uh, actually uh, different from what we expected it to be uh, we expected it to be the state of the last items which were returned uh, the last request we fetched but the state is actually having the items of the first request which is uh, for now not interesting uh, anymore and uh, this is actually uh, our race condition when can it happen it can happen from different reasons for example if uh, the connection the user is uh, using is uh, not a steady one uh, sometimes it uh, it is slow sometimes it's not slow uh, for example on a mobile device in a moving car. Another example of it can be when a, uh, those two requests are sent to different servers uh, and the first request, request is uh, sent to a server which is uh, busy now. Uh, it, ha it handles uh, a lot of requests and uh, the request is just si sitting there to be handled and the second request uh, got lucky and sent to a server which is uh, uh, a, a not busy server which uh, and the request is handled much quicker and uh, returned faster or for example if uh, the first fetch uh, has a lot of data to uh, for the server to retrieve uh, or process and the second request is uh, I don't know even an empty request uh, without any data uh, and the response is uh, very small so how can we fix it uh, there are two ways and uh, one of them exposes a little bug which I don't really like but it's simpler and the other way is a little bit more trickier and this is the second way, uh, way is the way that I actually prefer but let's start from the first and uh, simplest way to fix the race condition so the simplest way to do it is just cancelling uh, the first request when uh, fetching the second one. Uh, this will uh, resolve the race condition but uh, it will expose another bug that we can actually see here. What we are seeing here is uh, for example if we sent in the first request and the request uh, came to the server, uh, the server handled it and returned the response, the response uh, got uh, into our uh, message queue and now waits but just a fraction of time before the message returned uh, we actually initiated the fetch items the second fetch items and now after the initialization of the fetch items uh, uh, when it started running uh, I don't know on this line the 
message, the response from the first uh, request is now in the message queue. So remember this. Uh, now we are uh, setting the loading state to be true, uh, logging it and fetching, which actually creates a promise. But remember, we cancelled the first request before. So uh, now uh, we are just fetching the second request. Uh, the rest condition will not happen because when the second request is returned it will be uh, even if we don't have handled the first request which is in the message queue it will the second response uh, will uh, be added to the message queue after the first request so this is how we handle the rest condition but what will happen is what we can see here uh, the first request is now being handled uh, because the message is in the message queue and uh, what is uh, happening here is uh, the state of uh, the application is uh, is now a state of uh, not loading and the items that are shown to the users uh, to the user are the items of the first request although uh, he waits for the second request to, to return so it's uh, another bug, but it is not a, a race condition. Another way to resolve this issue, uh, which will resolve uh, the second bug as well, is uh, what I prefer to do. And uh, it is actually using some uh, session objects. So let's, let me show you what I mean by it. So uh, what I uh, usually do is uh, okay, okay, okay. Here, let's show. Let's do it here. Uh, I create some uh, session uh, object. Let session uh, last session to be uh, I, I don't know not defined. Let's define it to be null. Uh, and when I uh, call the fetch items, uh, the first thing that I do is initialize the uh, current session. To be a simple uh, object and save it in the last session object current session uh, and uh, the trick here is done like this when the response is returned uh, which will be items The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check whether the current session is the last session. If it is the last session, okay, let's do it the opposite way around. If it is not the last session, I will simply not do anything. Otherwise, I will update the state. So before I explain what happens here, let's see how it works for now. So remember, uh, now the second call is returned much faster uh, than the first uh, call because we delay the first call uh, much more. And let's see what happens. So look at here, what happens? Those are the two calls to the fetch items. But the callback, we can see here, it is invoked only once. It is not a, a because the callback is not called. Let's just show you. Console log. Uh, I don't know. Aborting. Aborting. Let's uh, leave it like this. Compile. And run again. Okay, so when the... Uh, last call is returned, which is the first fetch items, it will be aborted because the session is not the current session. Uh, the last session we did is not the uh, current session. The way it works is uh, because the both the last session and the current session uh, are uh, in the context of uh, uh, this function, but only the last session is the same has the same uh, reference, same uh, variable for uh, this uh, fetch items, which means uh, whenever I call the fetch items here and here, the last session is the same object, but the current session 
is created uh, for every fetch items call. Uh, so the closure, uh, fetch items, the fetch item closure has different current session. So when, when it returns here, uh, the current session will be uh, specific to the uh, specific call of the fetch items, but the last session will be the same object for all the fetch items calls. So uh, what will happen here is uh, only the last uh, fetch items will be handled. Uh, the same thing you want to do for errors as well. I will not show you here because it, it's basically the same thing. You need to check the session. If it's not the same session, you're not uh, doing anything. But And if it is the same session, you're handling the error. Uh, why would you do it for errors as well? Because you don't want to show uh, the user uh, an error when uh, actually the request is still fetching. The last and the, the relevant request is still fetching. To summarize, although JavaScript framework is uh, mostly single-threaded, uh, there are actually some asynchronous uh, things like uh, promises and timers and fetches and many more, uh, which uh, act a little bit asynchronously uh, using the message queue. So when you use the async functionality, you need to think about asynchronous stuff as well, although it is single-threaded, such as race conditions. You have watched a programming tips episode about race conditions in JavaScript. Let me know what you think about it and leave the comment down below. You can learn more tips or watch this video which YouTube selected just for you. If you want to watch other code related videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you on the next episodes of Program Artist.